First question is from Pat of Blanc. What are your favorite ways to improve cardiovascular health and capacity without interfering with muscle growth? Okay, so first let's be real clear. Um, hmm. I, you know, if you want to maximize muscle growth, some cardiovascular help will help with that. So there's, there's, I don't want people going the opposite direction and think I do no cardio because I want to build the most muscle. Cardiovascular capacity and health will contribute to muscle growth for most people um, as well. That's true, but I also want to challenge that a little bit too, though. It, well, I mean, uh, it, it all depends on the context, right? Because if somebody is also struggling with not eating enough food and they're a hard gainer, then any sort of extra activity is only going to make building muscle that much more difficult. Well, have you ever been in a situation um, where your cardiovascular capacity limited you from doing 20 reps of squats? Yeah, or, and, and so I know that's the argument right. for how it can help. So yes. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. I'm just saying context matters here because of course. if you have a, a kid who, like I was, who was a hard gainer and struggled, and the reason why I was such a hard gainer was one, I had poor programming, I didn't understand nutrition as well. And I just struggled with getting enough food. I couldn't quite – and the very first thing that I did that showed the first, like, 10-pound gain for me was cut out basketball. And I loved it. And so, yeah, did my cardio suffer? Like, could I handle supersets the same way? And did, did I fatigue out probably a little bit in my training? Okay, maybe. But I also now was burning, you know – 400 less calories every single day, which meant I didn't have to eat 400 more calories, which is what I struggled with. So, I mean, I, I've seen all the research to show the benefits that it can have with building yeah. muscle, but you also have to take into consideration who I'm, who we're talking to mm. that could be always, asking. Yeah, right. always. I can agree with that. Um, I'll say this with cardio, the most anabolic form of cardio, the form of cardio that will, that is the most muscle preserving. And in some cases, Muscle building is sprint. Yeah, fast twitch yeah, uh, hit. Uh, yeah, type of exercise. And this is where I tend to kind of lean. Uh, and, and so I bring up um, ways that I'll, I'll try and incorporate that. Usually I'm, I'm intermittently weaving in cardiovascular just to maintain a certain amount. So I feel like I'm in condition. I feel like I want to be able-bodied, athletic. Uh, so it is an important aspect to be able to have some kind of uh, an endurance. And, and again, to, to, to Sal's point, having like a 20 rep change uh, is really exhausting. The fatigue sets in, like it will contribute and help uh, in that arena, which also like builds you muscle uh, from that perspective. But to, to keep it kind of fast twitch and, and not extend the time length uh, with that, I think is, is definitely an advantage to preserve muscle. Yeah. Years ago, so I was like you, Adam, a hard gainer, um, skinny, fast metabolism. But I had gone so extreme with the anti cardio, yeah, that um, my cardiovascular fitness was wasn't very good. And I remember, and I didn't really realize it, right? I just I was like, no cardio, right. burn no extra calories. Then I had this trainer that worked for me. This was back when I was an assistant man, so I was probably eighteen or I was nineteen maybe. And I had this trainer that worked for me. I was at Saratoga, the twenty four that uh, up in Saratoga, and he was really lean. And I was relatively lean, but not lean as him. And so I said, you know, hey, uh, you know, I want to get lean. What do you do? And he says, well, I do a little bit of cardio. And I'm like, yeah, but don't you lose muscle? And he goes, don't do too much or whatever, but it'll help you get lean. So he convinced me to do some cardio. Now, my cardio consisted of getting on elliptical for 20 minutes, you know, a few days a week. So it wasn't a ton of cardio. I actually built more muscle when I did that. Now, it wasn't the cardio that directly built more muscle, but I noticed in my workouts right. – that I was able to do, you know, uh, more sets. I was able to do more reps and things like squats and pull-ups and deadlifts and supersets. In my case, the lack of cardiovascular fitness was actually taking away from my ability to, to build muscle. So I, yeah. I went to this exact same thing too, right? And the, the way I actually solved it was improving my mile time. Um, because if I was able to, to keep my mile under eight minutes, there was no weight training uh, set that was going to gas me more than that. Yeah. Mm. So, it, it, and if I if my mile time was over eight minutes, I wasn't as in good of in, I didn't have as good of endurance enough to power through some of these exhausting sets that you're talking about. Like 15 sets of squats, it's exhausting. four or five <laughs> sets is exhausting if you have no cardiovascular endurance, 100. Yeah. percent But if you can run under an eight minute mile uh, pretty consistently, 
being able to do that is tremendously uh, easier. Then it's mostly muscle fatigue. That yes. right. that'll limit you. Exactly. Which yeah. whatever then, right? So, and what I like about that, or what I liked about that for me was that uh, it's eight minutes. Mm -hmm. It's eight minutes of cardiovascular endurance that I'm doing, right, to make sure I've got enough gas tank to make sure that I can really fuel my workouts, get all the benefits of those studies that you're referring mm -hmm. to or that we're talking about right now, and then at the same time too, not spend so much time on the cardio. Now. Later on in my career, once I got into competing, I did hit post workout, and I only did it for the last two or three like weeks. Like twelve minutes, right? Yeah, twelve minutes. Twelve minutes, and it was and it's and it was the the final weeks leading into a, a show, and it, it looked kind of like this, right? So, and every show was a little bit different, but I'll give you a generic. Uh, it was I'd start off with three days a week after lifting, twelve minutes of hit, normally the elliptical or an incline on the treadmill or sprints or ropes, anything, right? So, and I and I don't go by some uh, generic protocol of one minute on, ten off type of deal. I go as hard as I can with a, a burst of about fifteen to thirty seconds, and then I let my heart rate come down. Sometimes that would take thirty seconds, sometimes it takes a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. I let it recover, and then I do it again. And mm -hmm. I would do that for a a block of twelve minutes. I did that three times a week for the you know for the first week, then the next week I did it four times, and the next week mm. five times, and then it would end on my final week of doing it every yeah. single day. Now, well, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I also like uh, really focusing a little bit more on work capacity. So if I'm if I'm doing farmer carries for an extended amount of yes. time and just doing loaded things slowly, and it's not something that I'm doing very rapidly, quickly, where I'm getting the heart rate scream initially, but that heart rate starts to go up like uh, substantially. But I'm still loaded. I'm still struggling and working through this. Uh, you know this this full body tense experience, which I, I feel has a, like a tremendous carryover going back into lifting. Weights. Totally, my favorite way to improve my cardiovascular fitness now is to do supersets, giant sets, uh, to have very short rest periods, high rep sets of big exercises like squats or uh, you know standing overhead presses and that kind of stuff. Maybe kettlebell swings. For most people, I'll say this: most people, the best form of exercise for your general cardiovascular health is walking, walking and hiking. And the main reason is because most people can at least walk with decent technique and form. Mm -hmm. Running uh, can be awesome for a lot of people. Unfortunately, most people just don't practice running and uh, it can cause a lot of problems, can cause a lot of injuries for people. But walking for most people is excellent. And if you walked Seriously, if you did like 15 minutes after uh, breakfast, lunch, lunch, and dinner, mm -hmm. that's 45 minutes of walking every day, and the average person would get all the health benefits they want yeah. from doing that. Remain as active as possible all day long.